Hello again. Really wish I didn't have to keep on harking about this Corbyn phenomena. But, as there's presently no other show in town, I feel I have little choice. Sure, I'd love to be commenting on, or be part of, an insurrectionary outburst, anti-establishment working class mass defiance, leading to a direct assault on the entire system here in the UK. But right now, to my deepest regret, there's nothing happening in that frame whatsoever. If it's only the calm before the storm remains to be seen. So, as the Labour Party leadership results are not long in coming, I think it deserves a few comments. <clears throat> it's plainly obvious to the delight of everyone who's invested everything into Corbyn, he's going to win by a significant margin. His opponent, Owen Smith, has less than nothing going for him. No fresh ideas, clapped out platitudes, meaningless phrases you'd expect from any lacklustre Labour politician struggling with the harsh realities of the 21st century. The only thing that he's got going for him, if it is anything indeed, is that he is not Jeremy Corbyn. <clears throat> Owen Smith's performance at last week's live televised debate on BBC Question Time was an absolute embarrassment. Same with the Sky News debate last night. Corbs, on the other hand, seemed to have revitalised, less shabby, and to have got his act together, and was well on ball, well on the ball, with strong, convincing delivery. There's no way Owen Smith is going to win this contest. It'll be the nearest to a landslide that Corbyn will ever experience. Owen Smith will deservedly return to the backbench obscurity from which he emerged, like a subterranean creature blinded by the sunlight. But what then? Apart from being in exactly the same position he was a year ago, what's next for Corbyn, the Labour Party, and more importantly, the hundreds of thousands of new members who joined after the Tory election victory? While the Parliamentary Labour Party may not immediately disintegrate, with their civil war waging with increased intensity, a doomed breakaway is inevitable. One example of this Corbyn illusion is based upon the huge enthusiastic crowds that attend Corbyn rallies. The experience of Thatcher and the Cameron years demonstrate that this will not translate into a general election victory. Corbyn's ideas for academies for the activists will deliver nothing, even if he succeed, succeeds in establishing them. Those who've joined the lemon rush into the Labour Party dead zone will have to spend their hopes, energy, potential fighting in these internal ructions. Theresa May's government, united on the surface, is also deeply divided, not only on Brexit negotiations, but grammar schools, for example. All this notwithstanding, we're still consolidating into an ever, never-ending electoral one party state the opposed the proposed boundary changes will assist this trend as the entire political discourse drifts ever rightward the only effective opposition could be the unelected house of lords what a joke here in the uk all the contradictions injustices are increasing and flourishing the system seems to be incapable of meaningful, meaningful reform, even to save itself, should the need arise. Us anarchists, plus a handful of others, realise that the only way we can fundamentally change society is through revolutionary upheaval. And yet, there is widespread acceptance of the status quo, sadly, from those who suffer most under it. There's a deadly internalisation of oppression and scapegoating. So back to where I began. If a genuine current of real autonomous resistance does burst, for, does burst forth, I will be one of the first to support it, as indeed we all should. It could spring from the desperate housing crisis, or anywhere really. For this, we must have a degree of preparation, not so much to extend and defend it from the forces of the state, that is a given, but from the Corbynista types and the left who will deliberately channel and divert it into the dead embrace of Labour, 
pseudo-assemblies and supporting middle-class liberal leftist factions of the system. Throughout the world, there is heightened disillusion, rejection of the system, spilling out onto the streets. Why should it be any different here? We've got to be asking serious questions about this while helping develop for any future upheaval. Bye.